thanks so much for tuning in to Talking Point. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah. At, at this juncture in time, wherein world over, it seems as if the headline indices, having done a really smart run up, are taking a bit of a breather, but the broader end of the spectrum momentum seems to be continuing. And at the same time, almost everybody's worried about inflation, taper tantrums, and valuations, but taking power behind the garb of liquidity. What is it that the ultra large money managers are doing with regards to their the, the investments of their clients? I think we've got one such person today, needs no introduction, Pratik Agarwal of ASK joins us. He's been on the show a number of times, so needs no introduction really, and a very large money manager in himself. Uh, so good to have you, Pratik. Thanks so much for joining in. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, the pleasure is ours. So Pratik, how do you analyze what's happening across the world? and what how it might impact investments for 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 indian investors within the indian equities yeah uh, so you know uh, where people are getting mixed up is that uh, there is pain that they see all around uh, us uh, you know uh, and the lockdowns does seem to have impacted economic activity quite a bit and yet uh, market seem to be you know not only holding on but uh, moving up uh, uh, but you know the point to be understood is that while the pain is intense it is for a short duration uh, we are already seeing a very sharp uh, correction in the number of actives downwards uh, and as we speak uh, state after state is uh, opening up gradually, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, surely over a period of time. Uh, look at it this way: we had, let's say, one month of lockdown, not like the first lockdown, which was very stringent. This time around, it was not as stringent and it did allow a lot of economic activity. But yet, if in a in a uh, sample company you knock off one quarter of cash flows completely. Okay, uh, as I say that uh, even quarter one numbers for steel, oil, software, you know, the big blocks of uh, profits, banking, NBFCs will all look stellar. Okay, but still if one assumes one quarter of uh, complete business loss and no pent up uh, in the next period, yet from a life of a typical company, uh, you would take away a percent or two of uh, overall value. You know, uh, so that is what a quarter of damage does. On the other hand, because of the economic pain that we see around us, uh, we have got policy makers uh, all focused here, all trying to help in, pitch in. Uh, in terms of uh, new government schemes and more importantly to focus now uh, uh, accommodative monetary policy by the RBI. Uh, we are looking at today rates which are some of the lowest that we have seen in India in history and they seem to be sticking there. Now the damage of a quarter, you know, 1-2% to 2 damage in a value of a firm uh, is compensated by even a 0.15 permanent reduction in discount rate, you know, which kind of maps to risk free. What we have got is a percent uh, lower discount rate over last one odd year. And that has a possibility, of, you know, that maps to closer to uh, 17, 18 percent bump up in the uh, value of a company, uh, put the number between 15 and 20 percent. Now that is what the market is reflecting, you know, uh, between uh, financial 21 numbers are kind of finished uh, versus financial 20, we are getting close to a 20% increase in EPS. On top of it, build a 10%, uh, 10 to 20, so let's put a 15% increase in valuation because of lower discount rate, so 35% increase. Point to point from the last peak, pre-COVID peak till now, we as a market are up like closer to 30%. So that still leaves some amount of money on the table, kind of putting some match to the overall, uh, this thing, you know, which says it's a liquidity driven rally. Uh, so as of now, I would say 7 to 8% is account of lower interest rate, uh, which may themselves be on account of lower liquidity and so on. And maybe to factor it fully, another 4-5% to go. 
Now the good news is uh, that lower interest rates this time around have been digested very well by the public. You know, in 2002-3, when that was the last time India as a country got lower interest rates, there was a hue and cry. And you know, uh, differentiated rates for over 60 uh, senior citizens, etc., came into being. This time around, uh, this people have taken it pretty nicely. You know, look at inflation differential between us and the West uh, and their interest rates and uh, ours even now. Chances are, you know, while in the interim we may get a rate increase, but after three years uh, we should expect lower rates than where we are today. You know, uh, so that is something to, uh, to be tuned on, you know. Uh, we may get a 25-50 bit increase for sure as things normalize and the recovery is so strong. But our inflation differential versus, let's say, US today is not there. Uh, they have a high, we have a low, but it's not there. Uh, and our interest rate differentials are still very large. So, is, is, it, uh, uh, is it your hypothesis that uh, this differential would narrow down a bit uh, that is part one part two would there be a natural narrowing down because while the fed may not want to raise rates uh, could they be compelled to raise rates i know the arguments of technology being an inflation destroyer and this commodity super cycle may be temporary in nature and all of that and the fed has been saying that too but could there be uh, factors including the opening up uh, and supply side constraints and others, which could force the Fed's hands to raise rates, Pratik. Yeah, so uh, that is the biggest risk. Uh, inflation, if it sustains, uh, you know, uh, beyond a few months, will probably force the hands of central bankers to raise rates. But it looks unlikely because US today has a very unfavorable base. Uh, it starts to get more favorable as we go forward. Uh, up till October, uh, the base you know, uh, will favor lower inflation readings as, as we go forward. So, uh, we have a few months before anybody's hands are forced. Second, you know, every government in the world has a problem uh, of having uh, borrowed too much okay, uh, to handhold their own citizens. And this problem won't go away. Okay, uh, if the inflation in particular is low, so one way for the problem to look smaller is to have good growth. So yes, there will be a bounce back after COVID. Uh, world will experience that. And uh, on top of it, if there is good inflation, it makes the uh, picture even more benign. So uh, governments in such time around the world, it is not one one government. So what happens is if one country sees a lot of inflation, you know, all the rating agencies, etc. will start to comment. But this is a period where everybody will want a higher inflation. And, uh, uh, you know, central bankers understand that. So chances are, uh, till it is possible, they will look the other way. Uh, you know, and keep the uh, thing accommodated. So, uh, we have this sweet period of 5-6 months, after that we should start to expect uh, gradual tightening as economy comes back, uh, but that is a period that we have uh, in, in the hands. Okay, so for, for now, no need to, uh, or less worry around that, well the markets typically discount the future about maybe 5-6 months, 12 months out, but for now Pratik doesn't seem to be worried about that. Uh, which is which is great from a police perspective. I think just one quick uh, follow up before we dwell a bit on the micro as well, because I would love to understand from you as to how you're reading uh, the tea leaves of different sectors. But just one quick thing, uh, Prime Minister's Modi speech, right, the day before yesterday, uh, and, and some indications coming from the other quarters of the government, whatever little speak, about uh, some bit of, how do I say, freebies being the order of the day, growth as we see might be slightly lower than earlier anticipated could a combination of lower growth and some social spending uh, hamper uh, the prospects for an Indian bull 
uh, okay uh, so my thought is like this you know uh, the expectation of a over 10% you know 11 to 12% growth meant we would be uh, a percent or two higher than uh, pre covid uh, you know what has happened is versus an expectation of 8 to 9% degrowth last year we have done better so the base itself has changed a tad and uh, if somebody is saying a world bank put out a number of 8.5% or whatever uh, we still go uh, higher than pre covid uh, at the end of it all uh, maybe not by 1 to 2% maybe by 1% but uh, that is the uh, maths so uh, not too worried on uh, lower growth number and given the pent up that is there given the uh, need of people to feel normal uh, this is something that people have not modeled they are just looking at other countries and trying to estimate what will happen here uh, but to my sense is uh, uh, people may be surprised by the uptick uh, that one sees uh, you know uh, people who are lucky and have their jobs have saved uh, they will be probably the first to spend and when they spend people other people will get their jobs and uh, take the baton forward uh, that uh, uh, will be uh, seen I, I i see that as a very high probability it happened after the first wave you know in the lull in between if one looked at uh, uh, you know wherever you could drive uh, uh, you know luxury places uh, uh, you know places where there was nature etc were all full all full of people so uh, it uh, is something which is very very human you want to feel normal after having been bottled into the homes for now close to 7 8 months uh, and that uh, feeling normal uh, you know you go out you will spend and the economy will come back now as soon as the lockdowns got over people who are tracking it on a day to day basis are saying that the recovery is better than that they anticipated so uh, i would be positive on it uh, that again gives some amount of tailwinds to the market yes lot of the most of the easy money is gone but still you know uh, given the sharp pump up in profits that one would see in 22 over 21 you know from a 525 530 eps will shoot over 700 uh, great chance that the market uh, does share that a bit okay now let, let's try and break all of this into how you are seeing uh, the the micro as well uh, we we uh, we've seen some bit of uh, rotation pratik if you will and um, uh, there is clearly uh, quite unlike how do I say 2019 or 2020 when there was just an unequivocal favoring of high quality uh, we're seeing equal appetite or so to say for value as long as the value is looking at some bit of growth around it it started with metals last year maybe now people are talking about say oil and gas um, in, in, in a period IT showed by virtue of the bottom up uh, stories that they put out and how well the market is digesting that. How are you scanning that landscape? Where are you fishing? Where are you believing that you might want to take chips off the table um, having, having been on them for a while and why? Yeah, no, so uh, after a long while uh, multiple years actually we are seeing broad market earnings growth to be bigger than narrow market earnings growth so uh, uh, you know, BSE 500 would have a better growth number than let's say NFT uh, and obviously uh, that is drawing uh, the attention of uh, investors and a larger part of the market is doing very well uh, this could continue uh, for some time you know, government policy is super conducive. Uh, you know, company after company that we meet say that uh, the whole picture is not getting captured. You know, the access that uh, domestic businesses are getting to Indian market, you know, which we were exporting in the past because of WTO, etc., etc., to foreign companies, is is substantial. You know, uh, there is a clawback. Uh, uh, which is evident people are talking of it uh, it 
could be because of price it could be because of volume it could be a combination and it is seen in margins and profits uh, the fact that covid has happened and every country is now focused on making itself great again uh, is giving a lot of uh, you know policy space to a lot of governments so that is point one point two if you look at this sleeve of government schemes you know pli 14 sectors assume 10 companies each who are interested so 140 winners 70 80 of them in the listed space uh, those companies feel good uh, to there is it, it doesn't end at pli it is that you need to backward integrate as well and uh, another set of companies feel good uh, you look at an ethanol policy uh, all of them you know all of the sugar mills uh, equipment producers feel good Uh, so the point is uh, the policy environment is super positive uh, every corporate you meet uh, you know has something or the other positive to uh, say and this is in sharp contrast to what was the uh, feedback yeah, after let's say demo true 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 so, uh, so that is helping people are expanding capacities uh, china plus one sourcing is helping spaces like pharmaceuticals and chemicals in a big manner you know, apart from textiles for example all of the companies there so practically all of the companies there are uh, in the mid part of the market uh, people are feeling better they are feeling more confident expanding capacities and uh, you know when they speak to people like us they they spread that confidence into us so you know chances are uh, that the broad market continues to do well for uh, longer uh, you know in terms of what we are doing yes uh, we have uh, increased uh, exposure to chemicals pharmaceuticals pli beneficiaries india manufacturing stories in our portfolios many of these names have already done uh, very well uh, we do believe uh, that a uh, lot of these stories uh, have legs they will continue for multiple years but uh, as a prudent risk control we do keep taking uh, profits away from the table after uh, you know uh, the company weight in the portfolio goes beyond a particular size so we will resize that but we have kept being exposed to those names right so pratik i i are you saying that i mean i'm just using terms up here this may not be your eventual portfolio strategy but let's say that if you had exposure to a couple of themes that you mentioned chemicals uh the the manufacturing beneficiaries i'm presuming pli beneficiaries out here not all manufacturing has done well but my question is that there is uh, on on the sell side right i see a uh, tremendous thrust uh, towards recommending uh names which have a lot of value here the psu banking uh, reports are dime a dozen now morgan stanley has come out in the note today uh, four or five days ago or over the last four or five days there have been at least three or four large brokerages which have spoken about oil beneficiaries and ongc and and the and the likes all of which have value now my question is are you getting tempted to book part profits into say chemicals into some of the others which have already run quite a bit for the last few years and not just last year and park that money here or are you only parking incremental money in these because you have belief in the multi year growth story of some of these uh, chemical pharma manufacturing stories yeah, so uh, it is one's belief uh, you know we seek to invest into high quality high growth combination spaces and high growth is not one year growth multi year growth spaces uh, you know uh, so uh, spaces where the positivity of is on account of something going right for a shorter period of time for example a commodity price uh, does not lend itself to our kind of investing so we uh, don't look there uh spaces uh, like let's say corporate lending i would believe would face a lot of challenge going forward while while during the covid period they are having a great time so in covid the issue is sme and smaller uh, large corporates are all making good money and the market is showing that you know 
there has been a huge shift from unorganized to organized. So all of the of those guys are doing well. There is deleveraging. Now the issue is uh, one we see very strong trends of disintermediation uh, in debt markets. So the kind of margins that people make in corporate lending, you know, three to four uh, percent, will probably be. Uh, you know, narrowed down over a period of time. Uh, you know, mutual funds tried to do that. Uh, you know, they have got a setback. Uh, they can again come back. More importantly, what we are seeing is advent of uh, REITs and invests. Uh, so anything which is a fixed return or more or less fixed return, you know, pipelines, transmission lines, in fact, power plants, solar is already getting attempted. Uh, uh, you know, uh, rental, uh, commercial buildings, etc., etc., can all be invitized or rates. Now, this was the safer part of a bank lending book. That is gone. If not gone, that will go. It is logical, you know, uh, they lend to such guys at 11 12 percent, while today, in a depressed interest rate kind of a scenario, Retail investors would be happy to give a 8% uh, kind of a yield to maturity uh, overall. So these guys yeah. can situate themselves. Uh, so what is left for uh, the banks in terms of bigger tickets to fund are more volatile earnings stream. You know, uh, the stable ones will go here and that increases the challenge. You know, so if somebody is not tuned to do SME non-standardized lendings, it's not even SME and small, non-standardized lendings, which cannot uh, be done through fintech, where uh, which requires some specialization, some knowledge. I think uh, the old world uh, banking, uh, big corporate lending is going to get uh, under severe pressure. Uh, it will take time in India. That's, things that's, have to that's a big call, I think. That's a big yeah. call. Most people are saying corporate lenders will actually make merry over the next two years. You are saying yeah. that will not happen. So I said in COVID times, they are not impacted. They are looking very good. So they will make merry over the next two years. But when you buy a business, you buy for the length of time. You know, what is in the stock price is not one year, two years. That's if true. one quarter is 1% to 2%, two, two years is 10%. You know, uh, so uh, that one should look at it that way. Sure, sure. No, but this is a very interesting perspective. Thanks for that, Pratik. Okay, uh, last couple of questions. I have one on on what everybody is now trying to, um, how do I say, play, if you will. And that's the opening up theme, right? Sectors which were closed for the last five quarters, hopefully will open up. Hopefully the third wave will not impact them. Are you tempted to play that? And how are you trying to play that? Because there are uh, some risks of a third wave out there still lurking. Yeah, so hopefully the third wave would be smaller than the second. Second was vicious. Uh, uh, yes, there will be opening up uh, uptake for sure. We are very positive on that. Uh, now, categories that you will uh, want to invest in may differ. So, people who really want to go on the other side could look at airlines or you know movie halls, etc. Uh, that is a bit uh, uh, way off for us. We we won't, we won't go there. Uh, for us, uh, you know, uh, stuff that go into homes, for example, uh, is something that we are definitely uh, looking at. Uh, we do believe uh, that's a space uh, that can see continued spending. Uh, in India and abroad, and there, if you uh, have a combination of uh, PLI-based uh, incentivized manufacturing, even better. Uh, so uh, that is something that we are clearly excited about, and we believe that bump up will sustain for some time. Okay. Um, what about uh, real estate? Since you said stuff going into homes is one real estate itself with this whole consolidation that has shaped up comments that have come in from multiple listed players including Vikas Oberoi saying that he doesn't have enough apartments to sell there's so much demand etc um, have you invested meaningfully into listed real estate uh, no uh, for a length of time we are not there uh, so real estate even the home types which used to be very high 
on return ratios is now no longer high on return ratios so except for two three how uh, guys who can uh, hope to get uh, you know uh, people come in and buy at launch uh, most others uh, will find it very difficult given the experience that people had uh, over last several years where uh, you know for one reason or the other the project just went on getting delayed uh, and many will not get completed so the best of brands probably can do it and i do understand hence there will be consolidation but the pace of consolidation that we thought there would be is lower than uh, expected for sure very few large ticket uh, projects have seen consolidation uh, so that's the challenge uh, you know uh, we we are better off uh, playing things that go into homes you know stuff like tiles uh, uh, cement etc uh, rather than the home guys uh, themselves and you guys have a very good understanding of that space by what you your group being present there so i take your view very very strongly my last question prati and that is on um, crude uh, and in the obvious uh, beneficiary stroke issues that it creates within the listed space like i said everybody is gaga over crude uptake and what it could do for the upstream companies but obviously some of the others like tires paints etc might have some impact uh, and so on and so forth how have you looked at uh, that variable what's your basis space thesis on crude price if you have one and therefore on the variables around it so if i just broaden the question a bit uh, practically all commodities have seen a very sharp uptick uh, crude metals everything uh and uh, that does bring in a challenge for user industry uh, they will see a margin squeeze for one or two quarters uh, no escaping that uh, however what is very very in favor of uh, the manufacturing companies is the fact that for a long period of time they have not taken a price increase uh, okay uh, and my sense is uh, it should not become an habit Uh, before that you know every 6 months you would see small price increases uh, from paint guys and so on uh, but then in between prices of commodities fell so much that some of these companies were making record profits which were not sustainable getting in competition etc etc and uh, you know as the commodity prices increased they did not take price increases uh, they have the ability to uh, is my first point it is up to them maybe not all at once and hence there will be a pain for one quarter two quarter but over two quarters definitely uh to uh, you know this will also be the reflection period you know so uh, people will want to go out and spend and buy in that kind of a situation you know, real economic growth of even 8 and a half percent is great uh, on top of it some amount of inflation would be digested so uh, there is that ability now how the company plays it you know whether they want to do a market share win versus a, a profit uh, uh, margin increase one needs to see uh, here again you know one has to see that when there is a commodity push the unorganized gets hit much more because they are working on cost plus their costs go up uh, and if the branded guy does not increase its prices the differential between unorganized and organized shrinks and there is a market share move so it is dynamic it is very interesting overall i don't think uh, one should worry about it just now there is enough ability uh, to increase prices but they haven't been increased for a length of time you know just now uh, companies will probably benefit from it rather than getting impacted from it okay I think this was really good having you. Thanks for those some of those contra thoughts as well. They really help uh, in 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 thinking through and and stay safe. Most importantly, look forward to have you more often. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay. And viewers, thanks for tuning into this edition of the Talking Point.